Hey guys, welcome back to the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. It's been a little while. Gotta apologize. Kind of had spring break going on and got a cold getting over that. And uh, I gotta give props to Derek Vincent, man. He hit me up on YouTube. He's like, hey man, where you been, basically? Like, Michigan's been going on, you know, stories coming out. Like, what are you thinking? So, you know, thanks for uh, poking me a little bit. You know, come on, get on there. So, just wanted to give you some of my portal thoughts. Michigan's been really busy in the portal. According to 24-7, at least last time they updated that I saw, Michigan was ranked number two overall in adding to the transfer portal. So, obviously, Michigan has to replace Jet Howard's offense, Kobe Bufkin's offense and defense, and as of now, Hunter Dickinson's offense and defense, too. And so the first thing they did was they added Burnett from Alabama, former five-star Texas Tech, I think it was, into Alabama. And five-star ability, but he's been sidelined by um, injuries. So it's really going to be interesting to see if Coach Howard can bring out his offensive skill. I think Howard did recruit him when he was a high schooler, but he chose you know, uh, Texas Tech, I believe it was, and then transferred to Alabama. But the injuries, sometimes injury bugs just hunt a kid and they just can't seem to shake those injuries. But one thing that I have read about is that he does play really good defense. I think there's a theme going on here where Michigan's maybe not necessarily replacing the offense with their transfer portals in, but they're definitely upgrading the defense. Kobe Buffett, I would say, was the best defender on the floor. Then I would put actually Terrace Reed as the number two, and then maybe Hunter as number three. <clears throat> Sorry, still coughing but I would have to say Burnett seems to be an upgrade on defense overall um, not probably better than Bufkin but overall he's a good defender so obviously the offense is lacking but he is a good defender then the big splash was when Michigan rec recruited in Caleb Love who was down between Michigan and Missouri he chose Michigan outstanding he seems to be a replacement for Jet Howard a high volume shooter and sometimes those aren't the best shots but he's a double-digit scorer, I think 17, 18 points a game, something like that. He obviously had a huge tournament run when North Carolina went to the final game, I think it was, two years ago. He obviously had a disappointing year, like all of North Carolina did last season. Obviously, number one team in the country and didn't make the tournament. There's questions, like, is he going to be a locker room problem? Or, again, will he be able to assimilate in and... and make it work. Again, that falls on the coaching staff, and that points to Jawan Howard. Can he make this work? I think that's a great pickup because you're going to replace Howard with Love's offensive numbers. <clears throat> I also really love the pickup. The same day, they added um, Trey Jackson from Seton Hall. Trey Jackson, he did do a job where he filled in for the five spot, I think it was, as a starter, maybe as the four for a starter, but primarily he's an off-the-bench guy. And that's great. Michigan needs bench players. If you watch my videos, man, if they can get their bench to score 10 points a game, just 10 points, their winning percentage is like nearly 100%. It's crazy how much better they play and how much they're higher the winning percentage is if they get 10 points off the bench. He's a decent three-point shooter, especially open threes. He hits good ones. So I'm totally very happy with the Trey Jackson. Very happy with a Burnett. Caleb Love, like I said, is kind of like a Jet Howard replacement. Maybe he'll play better defense. Jet Howard never really seemed to grasp the defense. Now, what this all does point to, though, is is Michigan done? Or are, you know, because they're kind of filled with the scholarships, right? But you have an X factor because Lewown supposedly is coming back. Joey Baker left, right? He probably wasn't going to get his red shirt back. NCAA rules and all that. But so Michigan doesn't apparently have a scholarship left. They always talk about, well, can you move, like, Jace Howard, if you will, get him off of scholarship and open up another scholarship. Maybe that's what they're going to do. I don't know. You're, you're, you're kind of waiting to see more dominoes are going to fall. It's interesting because uh, I, his name eludes me. I do apologize. But the, Ford, the power forward from Tennessee, who would be a great fit for Michigan, right? Open shots. He hits his threes very well. And he's not just a three-point shooter, but his name eludes me. I apologize. But he would just be a perfect fit. It seems like Michigan is still looking for more players. And it makes you just wonder, if your roster's full, 
with Burnett, Love, and Jackson. Why would you be looking for more players? So that makes me think more people might be leaving, but you would figure this is a time to get into the portal. The sooner you get in, the quicker you can find a spot. Then we come to Hunter Dickinson. Now, I don't know. You guys could answer this question. Hunter left for the portal. The rumors were maybe he wanted an NIL deal. You know, hey, go get your money, man. Or maybe he wants to win a title. So there's two factors there. One, could Michigan match the NIL and have Hunter come back? Maybe. Two, does Michigan now with Love, Burnett, <coughs> sorry, Love, Burnett, and Jackson, does that make Hunter believe, hey, Michigan has a decent chance. Let's come back to them. I can finish my fourth year at Michigan, go down in the history books of Michigan. He's already up there. Just you don't have too many Michigan people transferring out and being remembered as a good Michigan player. But, I mean, he's been an All-American. He's been All-Big Ten. He's been a very good player for Michigan. You might not like his antics. You might not like his podcast. But as a Michigan player, he's done very well. Now, so if he were to come back, do you want Hunter to come back is my question. I'm honestly kind of in the mindset of once you say you're going to leave, I think it's just like you just go. And when you say, I, I can't do it here at Michigan, that's fine. You have that right, that power. Go, man. Wishing you the best. I just hope he doesn't go to the Big Ten where Michigan has to play him. But, man, if you don't want to be here, you have the transfer, you can go transfer. So I'm like, once you don't want to be at Michigan, then go. Go somewhere else. That's my opinion. But Michigan, what are they going to do in the transfer portal? Are they going to add more? I think they are. Is there like a silent one or two? Are they like getting those secretive NIL offers from other conf colleges? Like, hey man, come here, be a starter here, and we'll give you this much. Or, you know, all those shady things that we know happens where even if it's not directly from the college, you know, they'll be like, a buddy will contact that per that player's family and say, hey, what do you think about going to this college, that college, you know? Okay, it is what it is. It's college basketball. It's like tampering, but no one's going to stop it. The NCAA, they're too worried about two hamburgers uh, from Jim Harbaugh to worry about tampering, right? So, so that's my thoughts on basketball. I really like the additions Michigan made. If you would ask me, at the end of the season, compared to now, am I more oper optimistic, is the word, Am I more optimistic about Michigan basketball and going forward after the people left, Howard, Bufkin, Hunter, if he does leave, versus who's coming in? Am I more optimistic about Michigan? I would say yes, because if Michigan kept Howard, Bufkin, and Hunter, I don't see where they would really have gotten better, right? Because they didn't add anything to the bench. You still would have the big gaping hole of death and no offense off the bench. Hopefully, Terrace Reed can take a step, but you don't really have anything on the bench besides him. So, I'm actually, I like what Michigan's done. Even though they've lost a lot of scoring, they've added some scoring, but especially they've added, it sounds like, good defense. And you know what? If you can't score, you better play good defense. Now, let's transition real quick. The portal opening window for football just opened up. I know it's a weird way to say it. So the portal for football just opened up. I think they have two weeks to enter the portal. It'll be interesting to see after the spring game and the spring training and all that, the spring practice, there's the word I want, if any Michigan players are going to go into the portal. Now, I mean, they can see the depth chart. They can see I'm like buried five, six deep. I'm going to get out of here and try to find a new spot. So far, a day or two in, no one's gone. So then they think the other way. I'm assuming some people will leave, but you don't know. But what does Michigan need, if anything, from the portal? They did really good adding to the offensive line. Their, their strength already from Stanford. They added Houseman as the linebacker from Nebraska. They added, I think, Josiah Stewart as an edge. So I think there's only one area Michigan could use a transfer in, and that would be cornerback position. I, I don't get me wrong, I like uh, Walker, the guy they're trying to play as defensive back, but he didn't have a good spring game. I know it's spring game. I know you're going to have the rest of you know April, May, June, July, August, September, all those months to get ready for the regular season. <clears throat> but I wouldn't mind if they added more of a veteran cornerback, kind of a bridge guy, because I can see Walker being a good cornerback. 
later. Just like Will Johnson was not very good to start the season. It took a while to season him, to get him acclimated. Great. So I could see Michigan going off and adding a experienced corner, just maybe like a grad transfer or a fourth-year guy. Because Michigan's secondary class is looking stacked from two years ago. They had a great secondary class. And then you could have, if Walker wants to stay, you could keep him and he could have a year of seasoning. And maybe he's ready to step up and be the starter next year. I do believe in Steve Klingscale and his ability to train these guys to get the most out of them. So we'll see how it goes. But that's the one area I could see Michigan adding. It seems to be the one area there. La- if there's a hole on this team, it seems maybe it's cornerback, right? And you got to, if they can address it, they should. We'll see if they do. I, their offensive re- line recruiting, it's just been loaded. It's like that's just going so fast, like these recruits are just trying to get in, getting their spots. So there's only like one, maybe two more spots left on the O-line. It's like going fast. You had uh, Frazier, you had Sprague. Yeah, now they're like next week, Friday or two Fridays from now, you're in three going to get that, oh, the center from Florida. So, man, recruiting's on fire, offensive line. Hopefully, Michigan can get some defensive recruits to come, and hopefully that Aaron Childs will be excellent. He seems to be like the uh, linchpin of the Michigan defense. It'd be also great to get a couple of those cornerbacks from Ohio State, but that's probably not happening. It's hard to get those guys out of Ohio. <clears throat> Anyways. I usually don't do too many videos if Michigan gets a verbal recruit because that's a long way from signing day, you know. So I try not to get too excited about getting a verbal recruit until they sign. And then you can still have it where players don't end up with your team. Just look at Hillman from Notre Dame signed with Michigan, right? And, of course, Michigan had Xavier Worthy. He signed, and then he went to Texas. So even when you sign them, it's nothing, no guarantee. Oh. So, long video. Let me know what you guys think about Michigan's basketball portal additions. Do you like them? What do you think they could add next? I love getting the power forwards. Michigan needed that. With all those power forwards, though, you just wonder if you're going to have to lose a couple guys. Like, will Cheddar go? Will, you know, T. Will go? I don't know. I For how, for better words, T. Will got burned on social media, and especially Twitter. I'm surprised he's sticking I almost think if he goes, that he, sorry, if Hunter goes, T. Will would leave. But, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Also, you have to think, sorry, just another side tangent. Michigan recruiting, word, rumors out there that Papa Conte is not going to make it academically. So does Michigan go out there and look for another player to add to this year's recruiting class? But obviously, he's got a couple months to try to get his grades up before he enrolls. So that'll be interesting, but... Some Twitter rumors about that. So basketball, what do you think about those? And secondly, does Michigan football need to add any portal players? If you got have anyone you have in mind, let me know. I know it would be great to get Jackson from USC. But, I don't know. And then, you know, what position do they need? I really think it's just cornerback. But you guys let me know. Obviously, if like a really awesome guy wants to come to Michigan, you're not going to say no, probably. <laughs> hey, long video. Thanks for watching, and thanks, Derek, for giving me that little poke to do a video. Until I see you guys next time, as always, go blue!